Why would I want to buy an FX3 over an A7S3? Now, this is a question I keep getting asked. What do I get? Why do I want that? Am I just literally paying for the fact that this is the same finish as the FX6 and it has a cinema logo on there? Kind of, yes, but you also get a lot more. So let's talk about why this, the FX3, is a better camera for video than the A7S3 is. Tally lights. Incredibly useful little red LEDs that turn on when you're recording and turn off when you stop recording. Why is this useful? Well, to put it simply, you don't have to just be able to see the back of the screen to know if you are recording or not. You have one on the top there, you have one on the back there at the top above the screen, and you also have one on the front of the camera as well. So I can be across the room, I can be above the camera, I can be in front of the camera, and I know that the camera is recording as long as that red light is on. On the A7S III, you only have the emphasized recording display, which is the red box around the outside of the LCD there. You only have that to know if you're recording or not. Now you do have that on the FX3 as well, but by just having that on the A7S III, it means you have to be able to see the back of the screen to know if you're recording. If you shoot with multi-camera setups and you're on your own, you're a one-man band, this is really useful because you might be able to see a camera across the other side of the room there, see if it's recording, instead of having to go over and check the back of the LCD. If you're enjoying this video, maybe hit subscribe down below, try the thumbs up as well. Click on the, the thumbs up like button that is. I'm a Sony user, I have a ton of Sony content, lots more coming with the a7 IV. It's a good time to be a Sony user. Now the a7S III has never given me any issues with overheating, but if you do insist on shooting everything in 4K 120, super slow-mo. The built-in fan on this will put your mind at rest knowing that it's not going to have any issues with overheating. Now the fan can be turned on and off and controlled in the menu so that it doesn't turn on when you are recording if you're worried about that little bit of sound, but I mean that's super close to the mic. It's pretty quiet. You don't need to worry about it. Now on the A7S III, that right there is your on-off switch. On the FX3, that is actually a zoom rocker. If you change your FX3's zoom range, which is in menus 10 of 50, in case you're wondering, if you change that to clear image zoom, now that little rocker right there will give you 1.5 times more reach with any lens. Prime lens, 24 to 70, you want a little bit more, past 70, it will give it to you. If you want some, I'll give it you. You can customize the speed so it can be slower or faster. And because that is clear image zoom, it is without loss of quality too. And if you like, well, on the A7S III, that's the on-off switch. So where's your on-off switch? On the FX3, it's just there. This one isn't talked about much by many other people, but on the right side or left side, depending on the way that you're looking at the camera, you'll see just there, Sony has included a proper strap mount for mounting a hand strap. Now, interestingly, on the bottom, they didn't include one there. So you do actually have to use an L bracket that has that little strap mount, which most L brackets do, or small rigs half cage here. And then this is basically the most minimal setup that you can use with a hand strap. So if you like to shoot handheld with a hand strap like I do frequently, this is a good option for that. Now, of course, you can use any small rig cage. They all have the mounts on the top and the bottom there, as does the tilter cage for the FX3. But this is just the most minimal way to do it with the half cage or with the L bracket and to have a hand strap on there as well. People often get annoyed by the way that I kind of throw cameras around and just let things dangle. But I'm just trying to show you how much I trust using things like this hand strap here. This one is actually from Tilter. Small Rig does make one as well. These are great for shooting handheld. It's the most minimal way to carry your camera around safely. And if you let go of the grip, you know, it's got your back. I love using cages to attach more things to your camera, but sometimes you just want a bit more of a minimal setup like with this hand strap. But what if you wanted to attach a monitor to the top of that? Well, the FX3 actually has quarter inch 20 threads in it, designed perfectly for that kind of scenario. It has five built into it, one on each side and three on the top, and the two just here are perfect for attaching a NATO rail, which you can then mount a monitor to, which gives you a bit of peace of mind knowing that you can use a monitor on the FX3 with a NATO rail, and it's not gonna fall off like if you were using with a cold shoe mount and a monitor before that monitor falls off. They always do. We're talking about all these differences between the A7S III and the FX3, but let's be honest, right now to buy either of those, it's near impossible. The chip shortage means everything is just back ordered. I actually done a video covering that. It's quite interesting if you, uh, you're you wondering what's up with that. But right now it is really hard to buy all cameras, FX3 and A7S III included. With that said, there is a place where they do occasionally appear for sale. And that's on today's sponsor, which is Gear Focus. You very much probably heard of Gear Focus, but they're an online marketplace for buying and selling used and new camera gear. Lenses, bodies, tripods, lights, all that stuff we love, they sell it. You don't have to meet people in shady back alleys anymore and do a deal and wonder who's watching and what's going on. And that's even if they turn up in the first place. And that's even if they respond after the barrage of just, is this still available? And then nothing. Silence. Crickets and the tumbleweeds go by with the hundreds of, is this still available messages? You know exactly what I mean. Post the stuff on Gear Focus and 
they'll deal with it. And they will even act on your behalf if something goes wrong so you're not just on your own opening a complaint and never hearing back from anyone ever again. So if you are looking to buy anything or sell anything, you can list as many things as you want on there, unlimited, for free. And the selling fees are super low compared to the other options that are out there. Side note, Matthew and I, Matthew is the founder of Gear Focus. We were chatting the other day and uh, he's been a long time Canon user, has an R5. He just bought an A7S 3 Let's get back to the video. This is a really big one. You have a lot more control for dedicated video features. Now on the A7S 3 you can do a lot of what we're about to talk about and you can control these things and assign them to custom buttons. But on the FX3, you have buttons assigned specifically for these features directly out the box and actually says the labels of what they are on the camera directly too. You will have very likely seen on the top of the FX3, you have three buttons. You have one, two, and three. One is your iris, which is a fancy name for your aperture. Two is your white balance, and three is your ISO. Iris, you can push it once and it will lock your iris. So you cannot change it until you push it again. You can click and hold it and it will do automatic aperture, automatic iris. Same thing for ISO, click it once, it will lock the ISO, you cannot change it, push it again, and it will unlock the ISO so you can change it. Hold it, auto ISO. White balance, push it once and you get straight into your custom white balances, change it to whatever you want, push it again, goes away. You actually have a focus magnifier button right on the back of the camera, right there, and you can actually use that when you're recording. So you push that button once and it will zoom right in so you can see what is in focus. When you're in the middle of recording, it doesn't interrupt it, you can control your framing, see what's in focus by moving your finger around on the screen. You can also use the D-pad if you wanted to. Really useful to have that on there. On the D-pad, you actually have things that are just assigned straight out of the box and it has the labels on there as well. If you push once right on the D-pad, it goes and turns on focus peaking, push it again, it turns it off. On the left, you have the same with zebras, zebras, wherever you are. Up is display, like on the A7S III. And then down is the shutter button, which works the same as the ISO and the iris button on the top there. Push that once and it'll lock the shutter. Really useful for if you need to stay within the 180 degree shutter rule and you don't want to accidentally change it. And you can also click and hold it and it will change to auto shutter as well. Really simple one, but the grip has actually been changed compared to the A7S III. This is a bit more triangular. I'll throw something on the screen right now showing you an overhead shot of both cameras. So you can see that there is a bit of a difference. I actually prefer the grip on the FX3. It just feels a bit deeper, nicer to hold in the hand. Combined with the hand grip on there, it's actually a much nicer experience to shoot handheld with this over the A7S3. Now, yes, the FX3 is $400 more than the A7S3. And if all that other stuff that we just talked about wasn't enough for you, we actually get this handle included with it. You've probably heard about this. It's a top handle which screws directly into the top of the FX3. And this gives you XLR inputs directly into the camera. You get two of them right on the side there. You also get a 3.5 mil input on the top handle as well. So this means you can now record with XLR mics directly into the camera and not have to sync it up in post. Typically I record my videos like this with the FX3 so I can use this, the Shure SM7B, which is an XLR mic. I like it to go straight in so I don't have to sync it up in post. It's not right in right now. I'm recording this separately and I'm gonna have to sync it up in post. That's why this is useful. And if you did want to buy this handle separately on its own, Sony makes something very similar called the K3M and that actually costs $5.98. So realistically speaking, this is a better deal with the FX3 than buying that side handle is separately anyway. This thing basically pays for itself. So if you are a video shooter, the FX3 is 100% the one that you should be going with over the A7S3. Yes, you can take stills with this as well. For the occasional one, it's going to work fine. But if you are a hybrid shooter, I would still recommend the A7S3 for shooting both photo and video. Having the EV EVF on there is incredibly useful at times and nothing can replace that. Now, all that said, I can't really tell you which to buy. All I'm here to do is help guide you in the options that are out there. Show you the little differences and what you're getting for that money, for that $400 extra. And it's a decent amount if you're a dedicated video shooter. Hopefully that helped you. And if it didn't, then why are you still watching? Why are you still here? But if you are, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.